Good afternoon, I'm Mai Rodriguez. Today on Newsfeed at noon, signal number one is raised in several areas due to tropical depression. Christine. The House Quad Committee turns over to the Office of the Solicitor General documents involving cases against Chinese nationals. Former President Donald Trump steps behind the counter at a McDonald's to mock his election rival Kamala Harris. And the hit South Korean film Train to Busan comes to life as zombies take over a bullet train in Japan. Thanks for joining us. We begin with updates on a new storm here in the Philippines. Signal number one has been raised in several areas due to tropical depression. Christine, these are Catanduanes and the northeastern portions of northern and eastern Samar. Christine was last spotted east of southeastern Luzon, carrying winds of 55 kilometers per hour and gusts of up to 70 kph. Weather Bureau Pagasa says the storm could make landfall over northern Luzon by Friday. Before then, it is forecast to reach severe tropical storm category by tomorrow and typhoon category by Thursday. President Bongbong Marcos back in the country after attending the inauguration of Indonesian President Prabowo Subianto in Jakarta. Marcos recognized Indonesia as one of the Philippines' long-standing partners and closest friends in the ASEAN region. In a social media post, he also reaffirmed the Philippines' desire to further strengthen bilateral ties with the country. Prabowo was elected president back in February. He visited the Philippines and held a bilateral meeting with Marcos last month. The biggest batch of Filipino repatriates from Lebanon has come home as Bea de la Cruz tells us other OFWs in the conflict-torn country are urged to follow suit. 76 overseas Filipino workers in Lebanon arrive at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport on Sunday night as the conflict continues between Israel and Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. Migrant Worker Secretary Hans Kakdak says another nine OFWs will arrive today, but a total of 636 OFWs and 32 dependents have returned home since the start of the government's repatriation last year. Tonight with the 76 OFWs and two of their dependents, this stands as the highest number of uh, repatriates. No? Ito yung batch na pinakamaraming repatriates since we began. DMW says that at least 158 Filipinas in Lebanon are staying at the Philippine government-run shelter and are waiting to be repatriated. OFW party list representative Marisa Magsina urges all Filipino OFWs to come home from Lebanon and be safe with their families rather than risking their lives. Pilitin niyo po na maging maligta, uh, maging ligtas ang inyo pong paroroonan or kinaiiste yan upang sa ganun makauwi pa po kayo sa mga mahal nyo sa buhay sa Pilipinas. Nagtatrabaho kayo sa abroad para magbigay ng magandang buhay, di ba? Hindi naman po siguro maganda na uuwi kayo na kung hindi kayo may sakit ay lifeless na. Hindi po makatarungan sa mga pamilya nyo na naghihintay dito sa inyo. To monitor their well-being, Magsina says the party list will launch an OFW app that will alert operation centers and other government agencies to trace and assist distressed OFWs. But even with the ongoing conflict, some are hesitant to be repatriated because of financial issues and other commitments to their foreign employers. For those naman po sa mga kaibigan ko din po na ayaw umuwi, yung kadalasang rason po din ay ang sitwasyon dito sa Pilipinas. When it comes po sa needs po ng family nila, yun po yung mga naging rason nila. Pero mostly din po, uh, lahat naman po ng mga amo doon, especially sa amo ko din po, kahit ako po ay hirap din po silang iwanan kasi maayos naman po ang pakikitungo ng mga amo namin doon. Each returning OFW will receive a financial aid of 170,000 pesos, 75,000 pesos from DMW, 75,000 from the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration, and another 20,000 pesos from the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Kakdak says they are at alert level 3 or voluntary repatriation, but the government is prepared to raise this to alert level 4 or mandatory repatriation if the conflict worsens. Bay de la Cruz, BNC.
in Lebanon, hundreds of Beirut residents fleeing to safety following multiple explosions across the Lebanese capital. The blast came after Israel said it will attack sites linked to the financial operations of the Iran-backed Hezbollah. Panic crowds clogged the streets, causing traffic jams as they searched for safer ground. There was no immediate confirmation or information on what caused the blasts or any further details of casualties. Israel has intensified its military campaigns both in Gaza and Lebanon days after the killing of Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar raised hopes of an opening for ceasefire negotiations. The race for the White House enters a new chapter, trolling. In an attempt to shake up his campaign, former President Donald Trump makes a pit stop at a McDonald's in suburban Philadelphia, saying he was looking for a job. He then swapped his suit jacket for an apron to cook french fries and be on drive through duty. His, his visit, though, was intended as a jab at Vice President Kamala Harris, who said she worked at the fast food chain during her college years. But Trump is unconvinced. This one, I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Now I have worked at McDonald's. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. Okay, she, she never worked here. As for Harris, she said Trump's stunt was a sign of desperation. The vice president, meanwhile, spent her 60th birthday Sunday in the swing state of Georgia. Harris visited a church in a bid to court early voters. There, she drew a sharp contrast to the divisive rhetoric of the current political climate. But she did not mention her rival's name. And now we ask a question. We face this question. What kind of country do we want to live in? A country of chaos, fear and hate or a country of freedom, compassion, and justice. And the great thing about living in a democracy is that we, the people, have the power to answer that question. So let us answer, not just through our words, but through our action and with our votes, Some royal news now. King Charles visits the new South Wales Parliament presenting a gift to Australian lawmakers. King Charles gave them an hourglass to mark the passing of time in his relationship with Australia. The king first visited Australia in 1966, spending six months at a Victoria boarding school. His latest trip marks his 17th visit to the country and the first as sovereign. And in the spirit of marking the passage of time, it is my great pleasure to present a small gift to the Parliament. It, it is, in fact, an hourglass, a speech timer, <laughs> to sit in the chamber and bear witness to the Legislative Council's next chapter. So with the sounds of time encouraging brevity, <laughs> it just remains for me to say what a great joy it is to come to Australia for the first time as sovereign and to renew a love of this country and its people, which I have cherished for so long. So thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for making me feel so very welcome. Thank you. We're taking a quick break. Up ahead, the House Quad Committee turns over to the Office of the Solicitor General documents involving cases against Chinese nationals. The details when Newsfeed at Noon returns. Stay with us.
You're back on Newsfeed at noon. The House Quad Committee turns over to the Office of the Solicitor General documents involving land acquisitions by Chinese nationals pretending to be Filipinos. Let's get updates from Zandro Chona, who joins us now on the line. Zandro, is this part of the partial committee report that we are expecting the Quadcom to release this week? May not yet. House Quadcom Overall Chairman Representative Robert East Barber said they are submitting these documents for the OSG to urgently look at them and possibly file cases against at least two individuals. These documents could indict several Chinese nationals who bought hectares and hectares of land. The 1987 Constitution prohibits foreign nationals from 100% land ownership in the country. House Quadcom co-chair Representative Karaps Paduano identified A.D. Taiyang, who allegedly sold land to Mexico Pampanga Municipal Government, and Willie Ong, the owner of the Empire 999 Realty Corporation, the company that owns the warehouse in Mexico Pampanga, where the 3.6 billion pesos of Shabu were seized last year. Aside from the two, several other personalities may be charged as well. Attorney Hermes Ocampo, Assistant Solicitor General, said they are yet to look at the documents and study the possible filing of cases. The OSG will be conducting their own investigation for possible for future proceedings. Mai? Zandro, tomorrow the Quadcom will resume its inquiry into the drug war. Is there any news if former President Rodrigo Duterte will attend the hearing? Well, my barbers reiterated that they have invited the former president and, of course, the invitation through the PNP. But until this moment, they have yet to receive a confirmation from the former president. My. Thank you for that report, Zandro Ochona. The Philippines posts its biggest dollar surplus in nearly four years. The data from the Banco Central shows a $3.5 billion balance of payment surplus in September, a major turnaround from last year's $414 million deficit. This surplus was largely driven by foreign borrowings by the government and by earnings from the central bank's investments abroad. This is the biggest surplus since December 2020 when the country posted a record BOP surplus of $16 billion. As of September, the total BOP surplus stands at $5.1 billion, already exceeding the full-year forecast of $2.3 billion. Over now to the country's external debt payments, which have gone down as of July. The Philippines paid $7.7 billion on its external debt, nearly 8% less than the $8.3 billion paid last year. As of the second quarter, the debt payments were 3.1% of the country's gross domestic product, down from 3.6% last year. The Energy Department is set to cancel at least 105 renewable energy contracts for failing to meet deadlines. The agency says these contracts will be reassigned to new developers who can complete the projects. Many of these contracts awarded between 2017 and 2019 face delays due to issues over securing permits and grid connections. These projects cover a range of renewable sources, including solar, hydropower, wind, geothermal, and biomass energy. Overseas Chinese drone maker DJI sues the Pentagon for including it in a blacklist of companies that are allegedly a national security threat. DJI claims its inclusion is unjust. It also notes the company has attempted to engage with the Defense Department for over 16 months but has now determined that it has no alternative other than to seek relief in federal court. DJI was blacklisted in 2022 due to its supposed ties with the Chinese military. Still to come, a pug that went from being Britain's ugliest dog to a Hollywood star is now nominated for the canine equivalent of the Oscars. That and more when we return. Keep it here on Newsfeed at noon.
Welcome back. You're still on News Feed at Noon. Fans from around the world continue to pay homage to former One Direction star Liam Payne, who died last week. Here in the Philippines, a tribute wall was put up at a Manila mall where directioners wrote messages to Liam and offered flowers. Since bata pa po kasi ako, part na siya ng buhay ko. Sobrang dami niya pong binago sa akin. Um, I was actually 10 years old back then when um, start, naging start po ako maging fan ng Wendy and nasa college na ako and I'm still the biggest fan of them kahit nag nagsasolo na po sila. Liam died on October 16th after falling from the balcony of his room on the third floor Today, of a hotel in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Right. Circumstances surrounding his uh, death are right still process. under probe, but investigators say it likely occurred Morning, after, quote, some kind of episode Today, due to substance abuse. Right. In other news, the spooky season in full swing with Halloween celebrations being held across the globe. In Japan, zombies surprised passengers of a bullet train that connects Tokyo to Osaka. The gimmick was inspired by the 2016 hit South Korean film, Train to Busan. Organizers say they hope to run a similar ride next year, but with Japanese yokai monsters. At first, I felt a little nervous because I have like a love-hate relationship with being scared. I didn't know how bad it was going to be. I get a little, a little anxiety. But um, honestly, as soon as I got in, I saw just how happy everyone was. Like I feed off of energy and everyone's energy was really positive and happy. Um, so immediately when I got on, those nerves kind of faded away. And then by the end, I didn't want it to end. So <laughs> it was enjoyable from the beginning to the end. Meanwhile, hundreds of zombies took over the streets of Mexico City and the Chilean capital of Santiago. This is part of the annual zombie walk that began in Sacramento, California in 2001. Since then, the event has spread to major cities worldwide, including Singapore, Frankfurt, and Buenos Aires. A grand time for dogs and their humans as the annual Tompkins Square Halloween Dog Parade returns to New York's East Village. The event brings together a diverse cast of characters from a furry little Cinderella to hip-hop group Run DMC. Also taking the spotlight are dogs in hot dog suits and Yankees jerseys and a pup named Gremlin who showed up as former Yankees player Derek Jeter. This year marks the 34th anniversary of the annual parade. We represent the Yankees. We're going to sweep the match if we go on a subway series. He said it. Not me. He said it. And speaking of dogs, do you remember the pug that appeared alongside Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman in Deadpool and Wolverine? Well, it is now nominated for the canine equivalent of the Oscars. Peggy the Puggies, which was previously dubbed as Britain's ugliest dog, is up for a Fido Award for her film debut as Dogpool. FIDO stands for For Incredible Dogs on Screen. The annual awards will take place in London on February 23rd next year. She is still the cutest dog. And those are the news this hour. I'm Mai Rodriguez. Keep it here on BNC, the Billionaire News Channel. Good afternoon.